Welcome to another tutorial. This one is for Biggles down in Australia because the last tutorial I did was about removing pops and clicks from your audio from your digitized audio tapes which I am processing a lot of at the moment. And any of you who are thinking of processing your old audio or vinyls you better get onto it very quickly because the equipment is dying and you need to get onto it very quickly. Biggles asked what was my uh, process that I go through to digitize my audio, so this is my process. The equipment I'm using, before I used one of these little Walkman things until it got a buzz, but then I have a laptop that I am also using to do that with a puppy Linux system, but I'll show you that later. But then we transition to using the family stereo. Now to get the audio from the tape to my laptop, I've got a cable from the phones out up via a uh, stereo audio cable into my microphone input. Now that would seem a bit strange. Normally a microphone input would be a mono input and if you've got a mono tape that's okay. Now old computer towers or computer towers generally have three plugs. One is the microphone, one is headphones and one is a line in and that's really the one you need to use, the line in. They seem to be combining the sockets these days. This one's a headphone and microphone socket all in one. And this one seems to be a microphone line combined. Because when I go to Audacity, which is the program that we're going to be using for free, download it from the internet, when I go to my microphone input, I have a stereo selection. If I go there, I can choose from the drop down menu stereo or mono and I'm going to get stereo so I can get a stereo input. Now depending on your equipment there is something to watch out for. A headphones into a line input is okay because a headphone output is only one volt of energy coming out of it and the line input is made to take one volt input. But if you go from a headphone to a microphone input, the line, uh, the headphone output is 1 volt, but the microphone input is only 0 0.1 volt. So it's 10 times as sensitive as the headphones. So you need to make sure that your headphones output is turned down really low so it doesn't distort the microphone. Preferably, you want to use a line input headphones to a line input in your computer. Here we are in Audacity. Audacity is a free program cross-platform. It can go on Mac, Linux and Windows. And after having set up, I'm going to select my microphone and my stereo input so that I'm getting that stereo from my tape. Then I'm going to play my tape in the machine and push the record button. And there it is, recording. We need to take note of the uh, meters up here making sure that it sort of stays blue rather than red in which case it will be peaking if I because if I go too high it's going to be peaking right at the top there and if I go down too low when I come to amplifying that signal here it's going to amplify a lot of noise so you want it to be getting up reasonably high but not peaking and I think around about just touching occasionally looks pretty decent to me. So there we are. We can check, I'm just going to stop it now, and if I go to the view menu here and down to show clipping, it will show me where it has been clipping and in this case it hasn't been because the I think the machine has a a limiter on it but if I was to go up to the effects menu and choose amplify if I try and amplify it more than is allowed, it will gray out the OK. That means it's higher than the highest peak. At the moment, I can amplify it hardly anything. It's only 0.8 below the maximum level. If I go a little higher and allow clipping and OK it, you'll find it will go up and you will see show clipping and these are all the places where it's got to maximum volume and is likely to be distorting so you don't want that control Z makes it go backwards and we can see 
that my sound file is looking pretty decent, ready to start processing. Record the whole tape right through. Don't worry about gaps between the songs or anything. You can fix that later. So here I am now. I have a whole 35 minute side of one tape put into the computer. It's not peaking, yet it's reasonably full volume. And now if you're quite satisfied that that is sounding okay to you, if you want your cracks, pop, pops and hisses and everything, then you can just go ahead now and go to, um, for you English people, up in Eddie Tariff, it's in Spanish, go to Preferences and go back to English except and now we're into English so we want to go up to the tracks menu and add a new label track and it will appear down below now I'm gonna roughly select there's more or less a song select it and then up to track and add a label at the selection and it will add a label down here that I can now put the name of it in while the tape is feeding into the computer it's a good idea to get your cassette tape box and type a file so that you can open up your file and then just copy and paste it into here. There's likely to be another song somewhere around here and add a label at the selection. It's another one here and another one here and then you can go right to the beginning here once you've put all your labels on the whole entire thing, maybe there's one here, we'll do that quickly. Tracks, label at the se selection, and label at the selection. I'm going to now go into the audio right at the beginning, zoom in somewhat, and then it starts about here. And then I'm going to move the arrow. It'll if it's a, put your cursor on here. If the spot turns white, you can shift the whole selection. The arrow will just shift the one that you're working with, and start there. Then I'm going to just zoom down a little bit further to the end of the song, somewhere here, and then listen to it. and it looks like it'll finish somewhere here and I'm going to shift at the end. Now if there's a gap here you'll see it so you can start your next one here but this a song this is one of the tricky songs where there's no definite finish to it some of the songs merge into another one. Let's take a look at this one here and it finishes and before it now starts Right, someone has just now started a new tape there, and then you go readjusting each of whoops, each of those points. Let's shift along a little bit further. Right, to the next one here. Zoom along to the next song. And I think the song start ends there and it starts there. Now if this was blank or an applause or something, you can shift that one there. Now when you've done all of those, once again, you can now go to your file menu, file, down to export multiple, and each of those segments will be exported you want to choose where you're going to be putting your files okay then you're going to go check that you've got what kind of file you want to export it to in this case I'm going to export to an mp3 files and I'm going to split the file based on the labels that we've done and we're going to it will automatically label the names of each of those individual mp3s using the label track name and I export and I can now fill in all of this information 
artist name, album and all that, and it will put in the, the track title that you have already written in, and just go OK, 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 as with each of the songs, and it will render the whole lot out into individual files. And we're going to cancel all that. Now, if you want to clean up your audio, there are there is quite a bit of work that you can do with that. There are three main areas that you want to do. Now, in restoring your tapes, there are a number of inherent thing, problems with tapes. Some of the old ones are, were mono, so you may have to stereoize them and uh, set some stereo distance just to simulate a little bit of stereoing. Uh, some of the older tapes also varied in their ability to um, get a standard volume, so we want to get them sounding more or less the same every time that you put a tape on. You don't want a CD that's got a, a quiet album and then a loud album and then a in-between one, so we want to standardize that a little bit. Also you've got natural hiss and that volume thing is some of the old recordings did not have access to compression so that they had a very high dynamic range which is basically this. If I select here you will get some songs like this one here which is nice and loud obviously it's a loud song and these ones here there is a great variation between the highest noises which you're really shouting and the very low ones so you can't quite hear down here you want to be able to hear the quiet sounds like someone whispering uh, yet not have someone shouting right next to them like if someone laughs or coughs it's you're talking nicely and all of a sudden BAM you get this sound there so let's take a look at this piece of uh, music to see what needs doing. There's a lovely function here in this little drop down menu called a go down to spectrum and it will give us a pictorial view of the song. The higher up here, this is 8K, you have higher uh, frequencies and down below you've got lower frequencies. So we can see that the white there, this low, has a, it's a very bassy sort of song. It has some good mid frequencies and then it peters out towards the top of high frequencies also. And that's okay. Let us take a look at the uh, what is supposedly silence. This is actually supposed to be dead silence, but you can see it's all spotty. That all those little purpley red spots is actually noise. You probably you can't hear it. Uh, I can hear it through my speakers, but you won't be able to. Also we have a if I zoom in here. I have a, this red band here means I have about a 100 hertz rumble there, a very low rumble that comes from the tape. On this one particular one, control click, we don't have any frequency, uh, harmonic frequency buzzes or anything like that yet, so I may be able to find a piece of music for you to do that. Now if I was to select this piece of music, which also is supposed to be silence and go to the waveform. You can see on the waveform it's very jiggly and it shouldn't be like that because that's noise. So now I'm going to go up to effect and then down to noise removal and get noise profile and it will take a stamp of that and let's take a look at the spectrum so we can see what's happening. If I now go to effect noise removal again and normally this slider here is at 24 by default but I'll reduce a little bit so I'm not going to get rid of all the noise because you don't want it to be so clean that it's going to be dead so let's OK that and it will you will notice eradicate a whole bunch of that blue fuzz which means it's taken out a lot of the basic noise so I can it, it has also taken out a bit of that rumble at the bottom but not all of it so let's click here by to select the whole file and we're going to go to noise removal again and repeat that over the whole entire file just to get rid of some of that generic hiss and that will take a little while depending on the speed of your computer okay now we have you see we've removed more of that noise on top of that so it's almost disappeared it and that will be almost a dead space and then it will come back with a little bit of life by having a slight about a mist uh, okay so that works fine 
let's uh, get rid of a little bit of the 100k this band of 100k rumble we can do that by let's just zoom out a little bit and see down here and select that and go to effect then down to equalization I'm going to flatten that go there's a preset that says 100 Hertz rumble and it will make the curve like this you can adjust the points by raising and lowering them and let's preview that all right we've got, still got a, a decent amount of bass but it's taking that humble that rumble out and if I go OK let's see what happens down here through that it got rid of all that uh, a, a little bit of that really low rumble here if I go back to here let's try that again and you will see what happens equalization and OK that and you see it's taken out that very low band right down below right down here back to the waveform let's go back out again oh and you can see that right at the beginning here that line now does not have that fuzziness there it's now quite clean silence it's still a little bit there now bear in mind any noise uh, restoration you do the more that frequencies you take out you are also going to take it out of the music so be very careful what frequencies you do get rid of so that's one step noise reduction now we want to deal with the variations here if we select this you can see the high peaks and low peaks it's peaking really high here if I go back up to my view show clipping and we have a peak here I can now go to effect and apply compression at the moment set for negative 12 dBs I've going to put the ratio up very high so it's going to crunch it very drastically but just in the top ends of the waveform and OK that and you'll see how it is scrunched the top ones and amplified the middles of amplified the whole thing it basically gets to a threshold and then by percentage uh, turns the volume down and then once it's done that it will increase the volume again to at least the highest peak being at zero and I could possibly even do that ag again but you get the idea I'll do it right at the very tops of those and it will get rid of there it did it now has shrunk them down and that is the hit of the piano is reasonably loud but then we hear the bit between is fairly loud now be careful how much you compress it because if you compress it too much the music doesn't have enough dynamics to it it's there's not enough louds and softs it's just the same generic loudness some people like that but I don't I particularly like a little bit of variation in volume but it's something that in the past they didn't have much control of on particularly on the older tapes and you may want to add a bit of compression just to improve the quality of the original song or if someone's you've recorded a speech a bit of audio compression on the speech will do a talk a lot of good there are a few other things like I could zoom in onto that one zoom in and get and then just select that little peak and amplify it down say make it negative 2 dBs and that will shrink it so that now if I go back to then if I normalize it normalizing basically raises the volume until the highest peak reaches this threshold in this case zero and go okay and it will make it louder until there's this peak here it increased the volume a little bit when I took out that little peak so you can get that higher up volume this is all part of compressing and 
taking those highs and lows of volumes out. Once again, be careful how much you do with that. So we've looked at noise reduction, the compression, and now frequency adjustments. Now the last stage that I generally do is equalization, is trying to correct different frequencies in it. Sometimes when you copy a tape and it's a copy of a copy of a copy, you lose frequencies either in the high or the low or your gain or whatever. It loses or amplifies different frequencies and also you can pick up horrible frequencies from the very recording machines as well, buzzes and clicks and things. And so let's take a look at this waveform that I recorded specifically to show you some of those. Let's look at the spectrum. And here you can see at these you have these lines, one at well is way down at 100, then 4K, and then a multiple of that, 8K, and then times that again to 12K. Let's zoom out. And you can see there's a harmonic buzz there. 4, 8, 12, 16, and uh, 20K, right? So we can get rid of those by, let's see, going in a little bit. Now, bearing in mind that if you remove this frequency, it is also going to remove it from your music as well. You've got to decide whether the buzz that you're trying to remove is more irritating uh, than removing that frequency from the song. So sometimes it can wreck the song by taking the buzz out, and sometimes it can improve the song by taking the buzz out. So first we're going to go and get the selection of um, of music and at 4 and 8k we're going to go to the effect and then equalization flatten that then if I go to 4000k which is here make three dots and if I put it up and listen to a preview you can hear it beep. I found that frequency there so I can now put it down to remove it. Once again with the 8, okay, which will be about here. I'm going to do the same thing. Raise it up to see if I've got the, yes, I've got that high pitched E. And then at 12,000, which is way out here, raise that. It's so high I can hardly hear it with my hearing anyway, so let's down that as well. And if I go OK, we'll find that the big nice band has totally disappeared. Now that is a little bit too tragic and too strong. So let's undo that. And we know that we've got more or less the right frequencies to get rid of those two. So now we're going to go to the effect equalization again. Oh, and do the whole thing. This time effect equalization, flatten it, find that 4, 4K. But this time I'm not going to do it quite so harsh, only down a little bit here. Same with the 8K one. I'm only going to do it this low. And I'm going to narrow the band width down. And also at 12, we're going to drop that down here as well. And then OK it. Oh, down at the 100, 100 downwards. That rumble that's right at the bottom there. I'm going to get rid of some of that as well and OK that and you can see it has now reduced the bottom one has just about disappeared and you can see the remnants of the the frequency being taken out of the music there and I could do it could have gone a little bit harder on the 8k and the 12k up the top I haven't quite got that right and the rumble has reduced a little bit now you've got to be very cautious this is a test to show you what a horrible little buzz and a harmonic buzz looks like in the spectrum and how we can get rid of it. And that is actually not bad. My voice doesn't seem to um, be upset by having those frequencies removed right throughout the audio. And it has definitely removed the buzz that I can hear that you probably can't on your speakers. I could also go ahead and do some uh, noise removal, get profile, the whole thing, effect, noise removal, and do it again. And it has taken it out of the whole thing. And it's a horrible little buzz. And a harmonic buzz looks like. Let's see what that's looking like. But you can play around 
with the equalization of it. I'll do a base boost like this, not too much. Okay, and now you see it whitened up along the base there. This is a test to show you what a horrible little buzz and a harmonic buzz looks like in the spectrum and how we can get rid of it. Right. Another thing you can see is clicks and pops, and there aren't any on this, but they will show up as little peaks also, more visibly on than on the waveform. Let me do some, let's see this piece here. That is, you can see, is a peak. It hits here in that frequency and goes spiking fairly instantly.